and welcome to Scrapbooking Station. We're just doing pages today. So I've got this great two-page design. We're going to be working with the sketch and then I've got three different layouts that we're going to build together. So I can put the camera over my shoulder, take a look at a clean copy of this to begin with. So this is the sketch that I'm working with in this video. It is from Becky Fleck at Page Maps uh, via my Paper Wishes message board. So this is one of the weekly challenges. Two-page layout. I love the fact that I've got multiple photos. So I've got a key photo, larger, and then some supporting photos over here. The great thing about this is I've got a three and a half by 12 inch, actually two strips, and the composition of my photos can be squarish, they can be tall, or they can be wide. So I'm going to work with that. Also, the other thing I like is I move from the left page to the right hand side. I've already got consistency because of this band and these pattern papers. Uh, so the title's got to be a little bit bolder because it adds interest now that it's on the right side of my page, as well as the journaling. Uh, the other thing I'm loving is that instead of just layering things, there are obvious blocks of papers so I can piece that together. So let's take a look at the photos that I'm going to pick and the theme that I'm using. So this is me coming back home from my vacation. So I've got me with the boys and then I had a nice surprise in that my yard was all cleaned up. My house was all spick and span, so that's what I'm going to be talking about. From there I'm going to pick pattern paper. So this is kind of outdoorsy. Uh, the lodge for me is my home, but it's also kind of out in the sticks. I'm using Serenity papers from Paper Wishes, and so I've got a lot of patterns to choose from. They do kind of head, tend toward dark blues, burgundies, but I'm going to try and stick with the greens and the yellows and the browns. So let me piece this together, and I'll be back. Okay, I took that photo because now I really want to work on this right side page uh, together with this little panel that's created over here. I do want to show you the backs. I leave myself anywhere between an eighth and a quarter inch to kind of piece these together. So a little bit of an overlap. Um, over here, I actually used a backing. So I used some dunnage. I ended up scraping this off and again, I've got about another quarter inch once I put this element. So now I've got a couple decisions to make and uh, one of them is this background element so I'm going to call it a banner but before I do that I need to decide how I'm going to do this title and so let me pull away some of this stuff and I'll be back in a second. Okay. Like I said I'm talking about the title and my title or the big title is Lodge. I've actually got a little subtitle that says Back at the Lodge and I'm going to use Metal Leaf so this is gold metal leaf. It comes from Speedball or it's manufactured by Speedball. I get it from Paper Wishes. So I'm using my double sided adhesive of film. And so before I actually cut these letters, I place it onto the back of a piece of cardstock. And then when I cut it, I cut it from this side. And that's so that I get a clear image. Anyway, we're not going to go over metal leaf or mega flakes. Kind of the same issue, but it's really easy when you use double sided adhesive. So I've got to get my letters together. I've also decided on this element. It's not going to be a straight strip piece. I've created some leaves. These are die cut leaves from leaves number two from Sizzix. And I've affected them. And if you've been watching my channel, I just released this uh, Just Add Water video. So just kind of blending in with the backgrounds. And this has got to go up and down. And now I'm thinking about, well, Okay, this is Perfect Pearls. It's a bright gold. That metal leaf is certainly bright gold. What other bright gold stuff do so, I have? As I alluded to, all golds are not created equal. Some are a brush gold, and this metal leaf is up, is very much a bright gold. And so, I've got these leaves. I've already used Perfect Pearls in water to kind of edge them a little bit with this bright gold. And then the other thing I did is I cut some die cuts, or these leaves, out of acetate. Because the other bright gold is this glitter dust gold, and that's really nicely stays in place. And so I'm going to use those as part of this border element. I took that photo because I want to step back and take a look. And so my first design element, well, it's about consistency and balance. And so I know I had two fonts here for my subtitle and title, 
And so the first thing I did is I know I want some words here in different fonts. I know I've got to wait on my embossing powder or use my embossing powder before I put a lot more on this page. And same with embossing paste down in this corner. I know I was going to have to wait on that. So those are the first things. As I step back and look at it, because I've got a busy pattern here, I decided to put some edging. And since I've got edging here, I'm going to add edging here. And what a great way to highlight my key photo. So the edging I chose to use are the jewel border dazzles, the gold jewel border dazzles, and I've also got uh, the circles. And so when I've got double O's, I just like to be looking in different directions. That's just a pet peeve of mine. Uh, the other balance item, there's a shadow on that. I decided to put a couple of my leftover leaves over in this corner, cut a couple more out of my specialty paper. Let me just go around the block. We'll talk about these products. So starting on this border, I've got the Expressionist Thinlet dies from Stamping Up with some specialty paper from Paper Wishes. Yeah, I love to mix everything. Actually, there's another little leaf here. And then I went over here, and this is a stamp set from long ago. I don't even have a title for it. It's 1997, so lowercase alphabet. And I did test, because she always says your gold embossing powder. Like I said, all golds aren't created equal. So this is the WOW gold embossing powder on this dark. And then over here, I've got a couple die cuts. So I've got uh, Jim Holtz. This is one this of the This is its die cuts that I used to create my major title are from Stamping Up a long time ago, Timeless Type Alphabet. And I love this box. Anyway, use these a lot too because they come in upper and lower case. Uh, talked about the dazzles. Of course, I've got my netting here. Uh, the other thing I added when I created this embellishment is this gold cording. And I did move my embellishment down from the sketch uh, recommendation because of my photo. There was less going on down here and too much going on up there. Going back, of course, I used my embossing paste. And the other thing I've got here are these uh, sticky stencils. And this is from Paper Wishes. Kind of a love-hate relationship because they're super sticky, so you have to kind of de-stick before you put them on anything. Uh, kind of like you would the painter's tape. Anyway, I'm going to leave you finished photographs of this layout, and then we're going to move to an 8x8. For this layout, I did finish it, but the considerations are the same. I need a layout that has supporting photos for my key photo that's going to be on the right. But the first thing I want to do, when I looked at the photos, obviously I've got all kinds of colors to choose from. But the other thing is, if I put these end-to-end, -end, and then end-to-end -end against the pattern paper, I would lose those edges. So the first thing, I'm going to make a panel that meets these requirements. And I'm going to show you the block sketch in a little bit. Next thing, I'm going to find papers that match. This is Best Day Ever from Paper Wishes, and I almost passed it up because there's a lot of pink and there are a lot of flowers. But you know what? I've got this blue-green color that goes really well with what he's wearing. And of course, I've got this bright green that goes with what he's playing with. So let me pull back a little bit. Again, I still love it because I can piece these things together. And I'm going to leave you this block sketch, but what's important here is I've got an eight. And then I've got another section. I've got another section. You know what? If I plan accordingly, I can cut this out of a six and a quarter by twelve. And I can cut this out of a two by twelve piece of pattern paper, and that saves my pattern paper. So again, the rest of the layout is really about balance. And the first thing I do want to add more black. This black is kind of a light paper black, and I've got cardstock here. So I'm going to pair that up with again edging over my pattern paper. And I decided to map my key photo. And that again brings this to the forefront. Let's talk about some of these products. So again, I'm going to go around the okay. block. Geometrics is really what I'm working with. Because I've got these triangles. And I could repeat the triangles, but you know what? I've got this edge. And it's kind of a triangular edge. This is a punch I'm using. I think it's called Pinking. Pinking Punch? Anyway, did that in black. And then over here, I'm matching up hexagons with my triangles. I can use squares or some other rectangles or whatever you've got. But this is Honeycomb Hello stamp set to create these phrases. And I've got the hexagon hive. I've also got the punch, but these smaller ones 
are really cute. Of course, pairing it up with some matching ribbon. Uh, the title is another strip die. This is Billboard, and it's an old one too, but again, upper and lower case. When that catalog comes out, I'm always looking for either uh, cut out die cut letters or stamp letters. So, works really well. You know what? When I first saw this sketch, I saw this banner. I don't want to cut that, and so what you can do, and I've talked about this before, get your crimper out, cut a peach. I think this is one inch, a strip of one inch ribbon, and the thinner it is, the more you can curve it. So, one inch worked in this. I've got some vellum, matching vellum edge those again. You know what, the last thing I did was some of these salutations or some of these phrases on here. I just inked it with a Sharpie marker. So anyway, I'm going to move on to the last project. So in this last piece, all I'm going to use is the left side of this page. I'm going to use it for the title of my 2016 album because I'm loving the economy. So, I've got some pattern paper, and I'm going to pick out my favorite, because I only need a 6 inch piece, 6 by 12, to create these borders, and then I've got this array of photos. So I've got my photos for my intro, I've got my album, it's kind of this blue-green color, and I've got my favorite pattern paper. So this is it, it's Floral Fantasy by Paper Wishes, and I love it, it's got black, like I said, it's got that blue-green color, it's got white, and it's got uh, river rock and always artichoke. So I'm going to split this up. Again, I'm only going to use a 6-inch piece of my favorite pattern, leaving me, you know, use this side or this side, but I'll have 6 inches to use later in some of my other projects. So let me slice this up. I'm going to slice out my photos, and we're going to talk about it. So my last layout with the sketch is finished. And again, it's a single page. And the reason I had to split up my photo panel was because I'm using 11 inch by 8.5 inch for my photo mat. So I just put a strip in here. You really can't hardly see it, but that kind of extended this way. The other thing, I didn't think about it until I started putting it together, but this paper has a natural bottom border. So I really didn't have to piece anything together. I just want to pause a second from this layout because I want to show you some other patterns, which I really didn't think about when I first started. I wish I had, but there are pattern papers that have natural borders. Maybe slice this off. You don't want to use this. You know, marry it up with another top or a different top. Let me look at one more because here's another one, a little bit more persnickety, but easy enough to cut out. Maybe I've got the stripes with the swirls, and then behind it I put this dot. Of course, the piece that you use here would be great for your panel. Anyway, I came this close <laughs> to making another layout, but I think you get the idea. So that would make this really easy. And some of your pattern paper is really so versatile. back to my finished piece, uh, the other thing I thought about is I want to cover up as little as possible. And so, uh, before I actually cut this pattern paper in half. I just printed a portion of it onto vellum. And this way I cut it toward the edges, kind of following the cloud lines. Went ahead and came almost all the way across. Again, adding interest. I did ink it, and um, actually you probably don't even need to print it. If you just took plain vellum, uh, tore your clouds away, and inked it, you'd get a similar effect. Of course, I sprayed it. Glitter dust again. This time I'm using my silver. I kind of forget I have it, but stays really nicely on vellum, and if I flash it, you're going to see how that looks. But you can see through it when you look straight on. Uh, the other little accents I used was my dazzling details. So I've got little spots of color, which are really hard to capture on film. I'll try and do that with my little finished embellies. And then lastly, I just decided to go ahead and add a couple of this uh, thin ribbon, kind of light, light ribbon, to mark where my hammock is kind of hanging up on the end. Anyway, really pretty. Like I said, my last layout. I'm going to go ahead and stick that in the sleeve, and I'm just going to be back, because I, I have one more thing I want to talk about. Okay, this sketch I found also very nice to work with, because, again, economy comes together quickly. But you don't really have to do much of embellishments, because you've got these block patterns. You've got a lot of photos. You've got this banner in the case of my two-page layout. 
And so, uh, the reason I didn't put a title in here is because I already have the title on the front of the book. But the same thing goes true for these. So, really small embellishments, and that keeps uh, a lot of interest with very low profile. Anyway, I am going to finish up with that last uh, scrapbook page, and I hope you took something with you you can use in your own scrapbooking. If you visit my website on the scrapbooking page, you'll see sketch number two, which I hope to have out in another couple weeks. Thank you for watching.